I'm Coach Corey Wayne, and this is my video coaching newsletter. And the topic of this newsletter is going to be how to gain the respect of others. I've got a couple of quotes here uh, that I want to I want to go over before we get into this email that I got from a viewer. And he basically got himself into a situation where he's very successful. Obviously, women tend to pay him attention, and so he was out recently. And it appeared that some other guys were basically busting his balls all night long to the point where he almost got into a fight. And so he, he wants to know how to diffuse those kind of situations, how to bring a higher level of consciousness to it. So instead of an altercation or something happening, you actually cause people to want to be your friend. And I first want to read these quotes here. The first one is by a character in the Stargate television series, which is I used to watch years ago. I thought it was pretty cool. It was by this character named Teal'c. And he said there was an episode that was really cool. The, I can't remember what the episode was about, but at the end of it, it was basically, I think he'd gotten captured, and so they were trying to brainwash him or you know get him to reveal secrets about his out his friends or whatever so they could capture him or attack him or whatever it happened to be. And he was able to get through it. And so they were asking him, just kind of, they were shooting the shit at the end of it. And uh, as he had you know, he'd vanquished the bad guys or whatever. And somebody asked him something and he looked at him with his wisdom. And he, with a very straight face he said, To resist the influence of others, knowledge of oneself is most important. <clears throat> and this other, the second quote that I'm going to read is by... I love history, and so I study a lot of it, especially like World War II history. And this is by General Omar Bradley, who the Bradley Fighting Vehicle was actually named after. He was one of our one of our best generals during World War II. He was involved in the D-Day landings at Normandy, and, and I actually have been on that beach. I took one of my girlfriends there years ago and gave me fucking goosebumps to go through all the tours and see all that stuff where all this shit happened that I read about from the time I was a kid. It was really an awesome, awesome trip. And so his, he said, wars can be prevented just as surely as they can be provoked. And we who fail to prevent them must share the guilt for the dead. That was really great. Because I've been in several situations in my life where things could have gotten out of control. But I, I learned at a young age, because basically like when I was growing up, it's like the way our parents raised us. It's kind of like... We were on our own, and we had to pretty much fend for ourselves. And so if there was a problem at school, and at the time that I, where I was going to middle school, there was a lot of tension between blacks and whites. And you know, this was in the South, and this was like the early 80s. The, uh, it was around the time, just a couple of years after the riots had happened in Miami. And, and so there was like every day there was like black against white kid violence, white kids. He's like, you couldn't go into the bathroom by yourself because... There'd be several black kids in there waiting just to beat your ass because you were, you were white. And so, I mean, it was a real, there was a lot of conflict going on. I remember one time I was I was going to a class and I walked around the corner and there must have been like 150 black black kids, boys and girls, all just, fuck, I'd never seen anything like it. It's like you ever see like a mob, like look like they want to kill somebody? It's like that's what they looked like. I don't know what this kid had done. He was, you know, he's walking with his backpack, he was crying, and there was just like 150 blacks just all around him just yelling, pushing them, yelling hateful things. I don't know if he got into a fight with or what the hell the deal was, but that was the kind of shit that I saw when I was going to middle school. And so and if you were like some of my friends who were like some of the taller white kids, like if you developed or like you started puberty early, you were getting constantly attacked all the time. And just because that, there was just so much racial hatred and tension going on in the school that I went to. And so... It's like I, had a, I, mean, I was a little guy. I mean, it, it's like I was so short and I could have got my ass beat easily. And so it's like every day walking to every class, you had an opportunity to basically get into a fight just by somebody looking at you that didn't like you or whatever. And so the way I learned to adapt and get through it was to make friends. And so a lot of – I basically made friends with some of the toughest, most badass black kids that I went to school with. And I became their friend. And they used to call me Little Man. Hey man, what's up, little man? And nobody ever fucked with me because I was their boy. It's like you know, I if they needed help on anything, I was there to to, to help them. If they needed help with homework, something was like fuck yeah. It's like I I would be happy to do that because 
I was doing it to stay alive, and plus, it's like I didn't see the the real reason. It's like you know, I was going home getting my ass kicked by my dad on a pretty much a couple times a week. It's like you know, I I know what it's like to have somebody a lot bigger than you beat your ass all the time, and I didn't like it, and so I, I you know I didn't like violence, and so I learned to be a chameleon, and and I had to adapt because otherwise, I mean, I physically would suffer harm because of it. It was a very traumatic experience for me but i also taught me a lot it taught me a lot about race it taught me a lot about people and at the end of the day i've traveled all over the world my life it doesn't matter what your skin color is people are people and we all want the same fucking things in life and so i remember there was a t there was a time and it's like as, as, as you go through life you get challenged with things and I remember when I got up to, or I was actually in college, I think it was like 21 or 22, and I had to take a, get a PE credit out of the way. And so I took this racquetball class. And so there was a, a black kid in my racquetball class, and for, I seemed like a nice guy, and just for whatever reason, when I got put on a team with him, he just didn't like me. You know, I was short, he didn't like the way I looked or whatever. I, I had never said two words to the dude. He just didn't like me. And so like whenever we were playing a game, he would always fucking beam me in the back with the ball. It's like, if I, you know, when you're playing racquetball up against the wall, and you're standing there facing the wall with your racket, and it's like every time this dude, a ball went behind me, and he was standing behind me, and I was up in, like, the middle of the court, he wouldn't hit the ball back to the wall. He would fucking beam me, and he'd go, what are you going to do? What are you going to do, white boy? And that's kind of, and just trying to, it's like, for whatever reason, he decided he wanted to fuck with me, he wanted to pick, pick on me or whatever, and i kind of been through this, you know, I was I was like, and it's like all these things are going through my mind. I'm thinking, you know, I could just totally explode on this dude when he's not expecting it and just literally beat him to death. I mean, I envision this. I could beat him to death on the court with my racket. And I'm thinking, okay, well, I could go to jail. I get kicked out of school. I was like, all these things are going through my mind. I'm thinking, I can't believe it. It's, it's like, why am I going to fucking deal with this shit? You know, I'm like 21, 22 years old. It's like, I don't want to get into a fight. I'm just trying to get my fucking credit. It's like, why does this fucking guy leave me alone? And so every time he did, I, you know, my attitude, I just kind of laugh it off like it didn't fucking bother me. And then what happened, this was the interesting thing that happened. It's like after he saw that no matter how much hatred he threw at me and how much, I mean, he was literally beaming with the ball several times during class. After a week or two of interacting with this kid, eventually he just like, he gave up. He threw in the towel. He realized there was nothing that he could do that was going to get under my skin. It was going to bother me because I wasn't. I just simply decided I wasn't going to let it. And so what ends, ends up it happened is he actually became really nice to me, and we became friends. We became buddies after that. And you know, I'm not saying you let somebody beat your ass or whatever, but it's like, I mean, when I was looking at what was going on, it's I just didn't let it get under my skin. I didn't let it let it bother me. And so there's a couple of situations where it's like sometimes you're you're faced with that. And then so there's another one situation I'm going to tell you about. It happened years later. I was in a bar. And uh, and so this guy, he writes me and he says, Hey, Corey, thanks for all of your advice and your videos. And they're really helpful a lot. I know now after reading and watching your material that staying centered and absolutely owning who you are attracts the ladies. They come up to me all the time now. But I had a recent encounter that got me thinking. If being an alpha male has a positive effect on the ladies, is it possible that being an alpha male will cause other men to be assholes to you. And what you got to remember is any, no one will ever do or say anything that isn't a direct reflection of how they feel about themselves in a moment. And so at the end of the day, when someone questions you or they, they bust your balls, always assume that they're coming from a place. And deep down, what they really want is to be your friend and they want to be like you. And so in a way, they're testing you. They're testing to see what you're made of. They're testing your testicle fortitude. And so if you always assume that people just are trying to be your friend and are trying to get to know you, they're trying, I mean, think of it, even if someone kind of has a mean look on their face, just assume they're like maybe a big brother that's fucking with you or busting your balls. If you always assume that, and that's what I learned to do in middle school in order to literally to physically survive and get through it so I didn't get my ass kicked every, every day. When you do that, it's amazing. It's kind of like if you've ever taken martial arts or Aikido, it's like Aikido, what you learn is to basically take the other person's weight and their force and use it to throw them in a way that doesn't harm them. Because Aikido, the, you're as much cons concerned with 
the safety of your opponent as obviously you are with your own safety. And that's kind of the way I've always looked at life. And so I've always found that since I was very young, I've been able to defuse every single situation. I've been in some really hairy situations in my life. And so he says, the reason I'm asking is I recently went to a bar that I often frequent and there were some guys there that really gave me a lot of shit all night long. And from the second I walked into the pool hall, they started trying my patience. Now I'm a nice guy and I never look for trouble, but it seemed like these guys were hell bent on teasing me or testing me with their little comments. The key is to never let anyone or anything diminish you. And that's what they're trying to see is because the bottom line is that you got something that they didn't have. And so they're busting your balls because really they want to be your friend and they want to be like you. They obviously see all the chicks talking to you and they want to hang out with you. But obviously they're not very good with women and so their way of handling it is to be an asshole to you. And I, it re reminds me of a time like years ago when I was in real estate. I used to run an infomercial on TV and I used to do a lot of 30-second spots in the news. And so a lot of times when I would go out, I would get recognized. And one time I was at a pool hall with a buddy of mine. It was kind of like, you know, a red, redneck bar, basically, like good old boy place. And so I'm in there. I think I had, you know, you know, his dress shirt and dress pants and stuff like that. I didn't have a, a suit on that day. But, you know, I was dressed up kind of because I had just come from work with one of my, my buddies that, that I worked with. And so as I'm playing pool, this guy's like going, hey, are you that dude on TV? He's, you got that real estate TV show? And I was like, yeah, it's a TV commercial for our business. He's like, and then the next thing out of his mouth is, that thing's really annoying. And I and set and I and he just kind of had this like he's busting my balls because he's basically his attitude is oh this guy's a rich fucking dickhead and and he's probably a fucking snob and he's an asshole so let me see if I can provoke him. That's kind of basically what he's assumed. He, he had a he assumed that I was a dickhead basically, and so his test was to see if I was a dickhead or not. And so when he said that to me, he's like, that thing's really annoying. And, and I said, yeah, but what's, what's the name of my company? And he, like, right off the bat, he, he said the name of my company. I said, see, you remember it, don't you? And I said, well, it obviously accomplished its purpose. And he laughed and he joked. And then I walked right over and I put out my hand. I was like, hey, what's your name? And he told me his name. And I shook his hand. I was like, hey, nice to meet you. I think I bought him a round of beers. And then it's like... He went around and everybody in the whole fucking bar, hey, that's that fucking Corey guy from blah, 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 the TV show. He went around telling everybody like I was his fucking best friend. And at the end of the day, that's what he he really wanted. He just wanted to be my friend. And so that's why I assumed. And so I just made it I made it easy for him. And I could have said, hey, fuck you, asshole. And he would be like, oh, beat your ass, you little fucking snob. You think you're better than me? Because that's what he's, he's assuming that I must think I'm better than him because I have more money or more success, whatever it was that he perceived that I had that he didn't. And so I was able to diffuse that particular situation and it went re really well. And and I made a friend instead of getting into a fight with a dude. And then there was another time I remember when I was in high school. And I mean this can happen to you sometimes if you're, because you, you never know, you're going to be talking to a chick and it turns out she's got a boyfriend and he's there but she hasn't mentioned him or anything and, and you're just, you know, bullshitting away and then he comes over. And so I remember I was in, in high school, I was at a party and I was like one. I had my arm around a girl who's actually she's married to a good buddy of mine now, but she was dating some other dude, and he was very jealous and insecure. And we were just talking. I had a few drinks in me. I had my arm around her and another girl I was friends with, and we were just shooting the shit. It was like end of the end of the year, senior year, we're about to graduate. And this guy was her boyfriend was like ready to wanted to beat my ass. And like I had my other buddies who were on the football team were over there. They were like all leaning forward in their seats. And one of my other friends came over, whispered in my ear, and said. Hey, you know, so and so is over on their couch. They're like ready to beat this guy's ass. And I looked over, I looked at them, I was like, whoa, they're like keyed up and ready to fucking go into action. And this other guy who was her boyfriend, he was he was looking right at me. He didn't even see my friends who were ready to beat his ass. And so I had this whole situation in like some, you know, a living room here. I mean, we could have involved in a big fight. And then, and then I saw this and I was like, oh, I knew right what to do. And I walked, I took my arms off and I walked right over and I put my hand on. I was like, hey, man, what's your name? And and introduced myself. I was like, hey, can I? And I was like, hey, I have really good friends with your. I understand you're so and so's boyfriend. I was like, oh, it's nice to meet you, man. He's like, she's great. We're like, she's like a sister to me. And I was like, can I get you a beer? And, I, and it's like, I made a friend. And it could have totally evolved into something different. So if you want my help right away, go to my website, book a phone coaching session by clicking the products tab, and I'll talk to you soon.